important. Indeed, the strategy itself, for, for, since it's, uh, in, in, I don't know, it's uh, inception. No I don't know, but slides are just <laughs> moving. I don't, Okay, we are here. So, uh, the DICE, since its uh, inception, was um, conceived as a people-centered uh, strategy. In particular, the strategy itself maintained that the DICE had to be co-owned by European and African non-institutional actors and should work as a permanent platform for information and for gathering a broad spectrum of civil society actors. And what is new, that is, in comparison to other previous document, the strategy acknowledged civil society's role from the monitoring and in particular in the implementation of the strategy as offering a real added value. And um, thanks to its long established presence on the ground and networking on in, in the field. In particular, as far as the security sector is concerned, the study investigating, uh, investigated the added value that civil society uh, can bring in four particular areas. These are uh, dialogue on peace and security aspects, the um, conflict analysis and uh, early warning, um, uh, capacity building and training and mediation and conflict uh, resolution. And it's important to say that this um, con action in these four areas contribute to the achievement of two relevant objectives of the partnerships that are um, the dialogue on peace and security challenges and the operationalization of the Africa peace and security um, architecture. What resulted from the study is that um, despite formal commitments of pa on paper, the picture emerging from the strategy on the actual involvement of civil society is rather grey. So far, the choice doesn't seem to have lived up to ex expectation yet. And opinion collected throughout the study revealed that most of the remarks made on the first action plan still apply today. At the general level, Civil society actors perceive the GIS framework as too bureaucratic, and both African and European civil society organizations feel to hardly succeed in having an impact and influencing the institution through a bottom-up approach. Another common remark is that although they acknowledge to be consulted, especially on the European side, this not happen on a regular basis, and it seems more to allow institutional stakeholders to fix the civil society organization box. However, it is fair uh, to underline that different perception in this regard exist. According to institutional stakeholders, it seems that civil society actors tend to intervene on a more uh, only when specific issues are at stake, especially uh, funding. Um, as far as the in real implementation and participation of civil society in the um, strategy and in peace and security partnership, the main challenges preventing its effective participation can be divided into three main categories. Civil society organization capacity, mechanisms of participation and funding. As far as the first category is concerned, we can see an uneven engagement of civil society on both sides of the partnership, uh, with African actors still lagging behind. The main concerns are a lack of human uh, resources and expertise, or the difficulties in identifying the existing one, and also um, limited funding that um, prevent joint initiatives to take place on a regular um, basis. The result is that often more um, multinational NGOs, so the biggest one, are better involved and get access to the strategy and to institutional uh, stakeholders. And um, another concern is uh, regards the role of the Econo African Union Economic Social Control Council that is the, actually the only channel through which African civil society actors can access the strategy and its procedures are perceived a um, little bit uh, bureaucratic and um, transparency seems to lack. In, on this side it is however important to underline that again different perception exists. Indeed the ECOSOC maintains 
saying that limited access of civil society organization to the strategy is more due to limited cooperation among civil society actors themselves and also um, due to a lack of a formal counterpart on the European side on, as um, to the ECOSOC that prevents partners from speaking the same language and uh, fully understand and recognize each other. In terms of mechanism of participation, the attention uh, should be focused on implementation teams and JEGs that have proved sub somewhat ineffective. Implementation teams, especially on the European side, seems to work as a sharing platform information with uh, sharing information platform without setting common objectives for action. And the JEGs, uh, um, the main limit is that they seem to stay more at a political than technical level as they are supposed to be. In addition, uh, civil society representatives maintain that uh, in involvement in JAGS meetings or implementation teams or also in other meetings uh, um, between the strategy and the partnership uh, doesn't occur on a regular basis and are some delays in informing them on future meetings also due to some institutional reorganization on the European side after the establishment of the European Action, External Action Service. As concern funding, the issue um, at stakes are um, double. One is uh, limited funding available for civil society organization participation and organization of, of joint meetings, but at the same time a lack of expertise, especially for smaller African organizations, that prevents them from actually uh, getting access to funding when available, uh, due to what have been defined as civil society unfriendly procedures. Referring to these challenges and uh, in addition to what have uh, been said by Kai on RECs and regional mechanism, it is possible to put forward some policy recommendation to um, strengthen the involvement of civil society in um, peace and security partnership and in the strategy. With reference to dialogue, coordination and outreach, it's important to say that both parties have precise duties. On the one hand, institutional stakeholders should improve the uh, outreach and also better involve civil society actors in meetings on a more regular um, basis. And on their side, civil society should um, continue informing institutional stake actors of um, what they are doing, how the activities in the sectors that have been identified before can be uh, a benefit for uh, the implementation of the Peace and Security Partnership. And it would also be good to take advantage of other dialogue on peace and security issues that already exist. For example, on the European side, I refer to the Peace Building Partnership, or on the African side, to the AU Livingstone Formula that unfortunately has not been uh, really implemented uh, yet. It is also important that civil society organizations better organize themselves, and in this sense, networks could prove useful. We see successful example in West Africa with the WANEP, that is the West African Peace Building Network, and WACSAF, that uh, the West African Civil Society Forum, that have established somewhat structured cooperation with regional organizations that could provide useful also from a civil society perspective to better connect continental and local uh, levels. It is also important that uh, existing joint initiatives continue to be promoted. Uh, for example, in, uh, in the field of capacity building and training, there are already uh, collaboration between European and African uh, organization. And it is also um, important that in order to make capacity building commitments uh, sustainable in the longer term, that the principle of ownership and of training the trainers are applied uh, on a more regular uh, basis. It would be also important for the uh, EU to take advantage of um, the presence on the ground of other international organizations. From the study, for example, the role of uh, the United Nations Economic Commission for Africa that has a long established uh, relationship and dialogue with civil society actors could, pr could prove extremely useful. Um, in terms of, finally, funding, 
um, the, um, the debate on a financial instrument for the joint Africa strategy is actually uh, ongoing. And uh, so for the moment being a joint support mechanism has been established, but it's still to be assessed how this mechanism could really improve civil society engagement and participation in the strategy and in peace and security partnership. For example, it could, as far as um, considering what has been committed on paper, it could provide uh, technical expertise to the JAGs or um, fund joint working groups and joint initiatives. The final aim should, again, make the strategy a really people-centered partnership. Thank you. Thank you, Valerie. Again, there is much work to be done in this particular area. And we know pretty well how, how it's difficult also for Europeans to submit proposals to be financed by the, uh, by the European Commission. It takes months and the uh, administrative procedure are particularly difficult. Can you imagine uh, the same uh, to be done in Africa? Now, um, in order to uh, uh, open the debate, um, I ask uh, Nicoletta Pirozzi uh, to uh, um, wrap up some of the main issue which have been uh, um, uh, reported here. And uh, Nicoletta Pirozzi is uh, presently seconded national expert uh, at the European External Action Service at the Directorate uh, Crisis Management and Planning. Uh, but she was uh, previously senior fellow at our institute responsible to, for the African program. So, she is really behind uh, this session and the organization of the session and of the study. So, Nicoletta, please, uh, five minutes, six, maximum.